to continue, we always, in startup community, entrepreneurship, we, we talk a lot about fundraising, money, customers, sales, and so on. So sometimes it has this Uncle Scrooge-like uh, feeling to it that we try to kind of pinch every penny and, uh, and get so much out of it. Uh, but there is other side to business, and that's the social side. Uh, so we will hear from uh, two people who are involved in uh, United Nations who have done a lot for social entrepreneurships, social initiatives. So uh, I'll give the floor to Ari and uh, Stephanie. Thanks. Hey, thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck. Good morning, Latitude 59. <laughs> And hello to our friends across the global community who are joining us online, especially my mom in California. Hi, mom. <laughs> my name is Zephanie, and I have the privilege of serving in various capacities, including but not limited to being a legislative staffer for the federal and state governments in California. And more recently, as a civil society person within the United Nations system, and in a couple of weeks, I have the honor of being sworn into the board of the United Nations Association for the United States of America. Well, thank you so much, Zephanie. Thank Let's you. hear for Zephanie, yeah. <laughs> Such an honor to be with you here today. Uh, and with all of you here for my first time in Estonia, I've been so inspired the past couple days that, that I've been here. My name is Ari Eisenstadt. I'm from Silicon Valley. I run a social venture capital fund where our mission is to invest in a 1,000 startups working for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in the next five years. I also have the pleasure of being the International Chamber of Commerce representative to the United Nations. And before we start, we're gonna talk about social entrepreneurship and impact investing for the global goals. Uh, but we have something fun that we wanted to do with you all today. Uh, in Silicon Valley, there's, there's, uh, we like to hack everything. And they talk about biology being the new software and how we can biohack into each other. So I'd like to share a trick with you all today as we start to talk about these really big subjects and challenges. So I'm gonna ask you all to stand up for a second. Ready, everyone, don't be shy, stand up. Put your hands on your hips right here, and you guys smile. Stephanie, you can do it too. So at Harvard University, where I've had the pleasure of teaching also, uh, they call this the power pose. You have a great smile, sir. Yeah, let's see that, awesome. So this power pose right here, you're able to hack into the physiology of your, of your consciousness. Right now, you're increasing your testosterone, what makes you confident. You're lowering your cortisol levels, the fight or flight response mechanism. By smiling, you're increasing your dopamine, your serotonin, your oxytocin, all the things that make you happy, even if you're not happy right now. And if you take a deep breath in and let it out, you're getting all the oxygen into your brain. And so as you're holding this power pose, just for a few more seconds, think about who you are, what your superpower is, and how you want to be able to use your innovative skills to work for making the world a better place. So now I'll ask you all to sit down. Thank you all so much for that. Yeah, let's hear for you all. <laughs> so, so now we're going to talk about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And this is something really historic. For the first time in history, all of the nations of the world came together and reached a consensus on development. And now Zephanie's gonna start us off. We're gonna do a countdown of those 17 goals and think about how you all can relate to them. What it's important to know is that this is what we call an integrated and indivisible plan and agenda. It's an action for the people, by the people. 70 years ago in a land far, far away of San Francisco, the United Nations was founded, and out of that emerged the supreme embodiment of the values therein as the charter of the United, Stations, United Nations. This document is based on the premise that we can truly be the first generation to succeed in ending poverty, just as we may be the last, unfortunately, to have the opportunity to do so, particularly as it relates to saving the planet. So I want to preface it by saying that there are three dimensions of sustainable development, economic, social, and environmental. So what we're going to dive into here is organized around the categories of people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. So unlike some of my uh, other audiences, I have a sense that there are quite a few numbers people here. 
So I'm gonna draw upon my notes here to take a look at these sustainable development goals by the numbers. Starting with goal number 17. Let me hear you say 17. 17. I want, I'm gonna do call and response. So we're gonna start with goal number 17. 17. 17. Partnerships for the goals. This is all about revitalizing global partnerships for sustainable development to set the stage for the global economy that we live in today. We've talked a lot about here about the Internet of Things. The number of Internet users in Africa, for example, has doubled in the past four years. Great news. However, we know that 30 percent of the world's youth are digital natives. They're active online for about the past five years, especially. But more than four billion people do not have the Internet. 90% of them are from the developing world. What this goal is about is developing multi-stakeholder partnerships that mobilize and share knowledge, expertise, technology, and financial resources. So what we're encouraging here is the use of public-private partnerships, civil society partnerships, partnerships within the business community to build on the experience and the resourcing strategies for the partnerships using entrepreneurs like yourself as a source. And the World Economic Forum estimates that achieving these goals will cost $120 trillion in the next 15 years. Now, governments, nonprofits can't do this alone. We need the private sector, and we need startups to work for this. So a couple weeks ago, we had the pleasure of bringing the United Nations Innovation Team for a tour of Silicon Valley. And after seeing how startups are able to work with civil society there, they were inspired to look into now building a UN office in Silicon Valley. So we've created an initiative called Entrepreneurship, being able to bring entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs together to innovate for the sustainable development goals. And we'll have more information for you all about that and how you all can become a entrepreneur. Goal number 16. 16. 16. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. This is about promoting peace, just, but also inclusive societies. So we know today that corruption, bribery, tax evasion, all of these things cost upwards of 1.26 trillion United States dollars for developing countries per year. Truly, I think we can do a better job with that money in addressing a critical global issue of more than um, a significant number of people living on $1.25 per day. We must develop effective, accountable, and transparent institutions at all levels. Can somebody tell me, is there an app for that? There certainly ought to be. We've got to ensure inclusive, participatory, and representative decision-making at all levels. Now, I know there's an app coming for that. I met the young man from Public Lobby just yesterday at lunch, all right? <laughs> exactly. They estimate that a third of the world is at war right now. And there's a great quote that the opposite of war isn't peace, it's creation. And I think that that's the new paradigm that we're shifting into, that we now have the ability to communicate across the world now, for the first time, half of the world is connected to the internet. And they say in the next five years, we're going to have 90% of the world's population together. And we're going to be able to create together, to be able to have economic and environmental justice to hopefully end these wars. Goal number 15, life on land. Sustainably, we must manage our forest, combat desertification, halt and reverse land degradation, and halt the loss of biodiversity. There's a huge opportunity. Meanwhile, we're losing land at significant rates per minute. We know that there are over 80,000 tree species, but we've only yet to discover the use of only 1%. Microorganisms, invertebrates, and others are key to our ecosystem. Meanwhile, their contributions are still poorly known and rarely acknowledged. Now, there, there's this misconception in impact investing and social entrepreneurship that you have to conserve. You have to sacrifice your economic impact for the social and environmental side. But actually, there's a new Morgan Stanley report showing that sustainable investing has a higher return and lower volatility than traditional investing. And we now see with new design models such as cradle to cradle that we're able to build our cities to be able to grow our economy while integrating within the environment. And I think that's going to work perfectly with goal number 15. Similarly, with goal number 14, life on water, we've got to get to a place where we are conserving and sustainably using our oceans, seas, and marine resources. Did you know that 97% of our Earth's surface is water? And 99% of the living space on the planet is within that volume. However, we are currently making $50 billion less than what we could be through using uh, marine resources such as our ocean fisheries. 
Now, th this is a goal that's really close to my heart. I woke up one day living on the cliffs of Pacifica in California, and there were news trucks outside, and the cliffs were falling into the ocean. So instead, I moved on to a boat, a big catamaran, where we now have as, so as a social innovation center. And we're actually creating these innovation centers on the water all over the world, in Sacramento, in Costa Rica, in Panama. We're going to Amsterdam after this. And we can now see systems of how we can live on the water, how we can be able to take plastic out of the ocean, 3D print it into floating cities, grow plankton, grow fish. We can revitalize our oceans and fully integrate humanity into them. Goal number 13, climate action. We know that we must take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. It's time for us to take a look at our portfolios for the investors in the room and understand that there are affordable, scalable solutions that are available to enable countries to leapfrog into cleaner, more resilient economies. Absolutely. And I think that we can not only move where the Paris climate agreements are as far as, as limiting carbon and being carbon neutral, but actually sequester carbon and develop our technologies to be able to be carbon positive. Goal number 12, moving right along. Responsible consumption and production have to be in place in order to ensure that sustainable consumption and production patterns are being used effectively. Now, we know that sustainable conduction and production helps to achieve the overall sustainable development plans and agenda by reducing the future economic, environmental, and social costs. But what we're really trying to get out here is the opportunity to strengthen our economic competitiveness and reduce poverty by doing more and doing better with less. Now these can be through closed loop systems. One of our portfolio companies out of Stanford University is developing biological solar panels, algae-based battery systems, new types of bioplastics. But I think also, as we see right here, that consumption isn't just about buying things anymore. It's about buying experiences. And I think that as we move to a more creative culture, as more and more jobs become automated, we're gonna see more creatives come out, not just workers, and for the ability to consume more experiences like this. Half of humanity, 3.5 billion people live in cities today. Goal number 11 is about building sustainable cities and communities that are inclusive, that are safe, that are resilient and sustainable. And this really comes into how we can innovate in our, on, on our cities, how we can build directly into the environment, onto water, and start to look up to the stars and build into the galaxy. Absolutely, because cities are our hubs for ideas, commerce, culture, science, productivity, social development, and so much more. Goal number 10, reducing inequalities. We have got to reduce inequalities not only between countries, but within countries. There's nothing inevitable, we know this, about growing income inequality. What we do know is that several countries have managed to contain or reduce income inequality while re retaining and achieving strong growth performance. Now, I think the key with this is not about having equality where everyone has the same amount. We've seen that with the Soviet Union and that failed experiment, but rather equity about being able to have, as nature does, a normal standard distribution. Right now, we have 62 families controlling more wealth than the bottom 50%. Now, surely there's a way of having equity and people being able to own their means of production and being able to have more fairness and equality. On that same vein, goal number nine, we're gonna talk about innovation, industry, and infrastructure. We've got to build a resilient infrastructure that promotes sustainable industrialization and fosters innovation because we do know this. Without technology and innovation, industrialization will not happen. And without industrialization, development will not happen. So as we think globally and act locally, we bear this in mind. Absolutely, and I think that that's where you all really are able to shine and show that with your innovation, how we're able to create jobs, meaningful work, and our tools for exponential, exponential growth around these technologies. Moving right along, how many of you are aware that 2.2 billion people and upwards of half the world's population live below the United States poverty line of $2 per day? Eradication is not only possible, but we are able to do that through creating jobs that perhaps don't even exist. Goal number eight is about decent work and economic growth, promoting inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment, and work 
for all across the globe. And we're seeing this with the new industrial revolution that's happening. Currently, 60% of 20-year-olds want to start their own business. And I think that that's where new models of finance can really be able to help these companies start their businesses and be able to have this impact on the world. And this now can happen all over. All you need is a cell phone connection. And we're going to see these Silicon Valleys popping up everywhere and be able to create a global community of innovators around that. We do need 470 jobs by 2030 in order to reach our goals. Goal number seven, ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Keyword, modern. Did you know that three billion people rely on wood, coal, charcoal, or animal waste for cooking and heating? And take a look around. One out of five people still lack access to modern electricity in today's global society. And I think the beauty of this is that the world and the universe is truly made of energy. And we now, a recent report came, that came out last week shows that there are more jobs in re renewable energy sources than coal, oil, and gas. So we're seeing that shift. It's now becoming cost effective to use renewable sources of energy. And taking a look, moving along to goal number six, this is dealing with ensuring access to water and sanitation to all. While thousands of children die each day due to water sanitation issues, there's a huge opportunity to take a look at what's going on with hydropower. Hydropower is today the most important and widely used renewable source of energy. As of 2011, it represented 16% of total electricity production worldwide. It's also the leading cause of death in the world, dirty water. But India has been able to create a solar power desalinization plant. There are new technologies coming out every day that will allow us to have clean water and sanitation. Graphene is a particular favorite of mine. It's still pretty new, but we're able to create a seamless sieve for water, salt water to go through, and the byproduct is actually electricity. So there's a technological solution for even the toughest challenges. I'd like to propose that there are also solutions for this next big challenge. Goal number five, gender, gender equality. While we put a challenge out to grow by leaps and bounds in addressing this issue, we have to keep in mind that gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but a necessary foundation for peaceful, prosperous, and a sustainable world. All right? This truly is the civil rights movement of our time, and it actually makes great business sense also. Companies with women founders, corporations with women board members actually perform better. So it's not just the right thing to do, it's a great thing to do. Another great thing to do, it's near and dear to my heart, is related to building a quality education system around the world. We do know that obtaining a quality education is important. We also know that there are 103 million young people worldwide who lack basic literacy, skill, literacy skills. Those are our employees of tomorrow. By 2030, we have got to increase the number who, of folks who have relevant skills in order to participate in the global economy that we are building today. And this really comes with the idea of internet as a human right. In the next five years, we'll have internet beaming down from satellites, and governments won't be able to censor it. So we now, with programs like the XPRIZE, will be able to drop tablets into remote villages in the world, and people will be able to teach themselves to read in virtually any subject out there. So, so it's really becoming democratized as education moves across the internet. In the grand scheme, we bear in mind that we've got to have healthy lives and well-being for all and healthy communities. We are strengthening the capacity of our countries by developing early warning systems and ensuring that we are, we are strong and healthy. We have three more goals left, so we're almost done. Only two. And that's, that's the third one, healthcare. And we're being able to see that as we talked about being able to hack into our DNA. But actually now with nanotechnology, we're going to be able to really rethink what it means to age and grow healthy lives. Going to goal number two, we also need to rethink how we grow, share, and consume our food. Absolutely. With things like aquaponics, with stem cells, we're going to be able to feed the entire world. And truly, right now, we, we produce enough food to feed 10 billion people. And it's really a distribution issue, not even a production one. Last but not least, goal number one, ending poverty in all of its forms everywhere. When we think of poverty, we don't always acknowledge that it's not just the lack of income and resources, but it's also manifestations of 
hunger, malnutrition, and access to education, and basic services, and many of the themes that we've talked about over the conference this past couple of days. The good news is that since I was born in 1990, extreme poverty rates have been cut by more than half. However, we still have a long way to go in terms of building resilience in our communities and supporting accelerated investments in poverty eradication efforts through our business practices around the world. Absolutely, and this is something that we can easily shift if we just change our mindset from one of scarcity to abundance. We have more than enough resources to achieve all these goals. And if we have all seven billion people working towards them, we can truly create the world we want to live in. And as we look forward in bearing in mind just a glimpse of what these sustainable development goals do, offering us a global agenda, we are here to develop an ecosystem that fosters innovation and encourage you to use entrepreneurial thinking in your practices as you build and create solutions to these unresolved global issues. We invite you to uh, go back to our Twitter page and join our global community of you entrepreneurs. We'll be sharing some information about a big global conference on entrepreneurship and innovation in addressing UN goals. And, and before we leave, you guys look so great. I'd love to share a picture with, of you all with the world. Could I get one of you all putting your hands up in the air? One, two, three, awesome. Thank you guys so much, Thanks much for love. Us. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, this is a topic close to our heart because at Garage 40 uh, Foundation, we have run hackathons in 20 plus countries. Uh, we have built like 500 uh, ideas or more. And yep. I would say like one third of them are nonprofits and probably all the 17 areas have been covered. One very quick question. Many of these nonprofit uh, teams, they start up, but they don't know like how to fund it and how to partner, how to market these things. Is there any way how they could like, come to you at UN and uh, do something to get the, keep these projects going? Absolutely, but something we focus on as a social venture capital fund are not just nonprofits, but for-profit companies that have a fiduciary responsibility for that triple bottom line impact of people, planet, and profit. And we're able to show that by focusing on that impact, you can be even more profitable. So you don't just have to be an NGO to work for these goals. Okay, so talk to Ari and Stephanie if you have these kind of ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.